G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course Akalfalus and today we're going to be taking a look at the Path of Champion tier list Runeterra. We are going to be doing a tier list today and we are going to be doing a support champion tier list on all the support champions available in the Path of Champions. So because there are a lot of support champions in this mode, we're not going to waste too much time. We're just going to immediately jump into what you need to know. First of all, the usual disclaimer I always give to you at the start of every tier list. Take these rankings with a grain of salt, especially for a tier list involving the support champions. As I just mentioned, there are close to a hundred support champions in this mode and 36 regular champions. There's just simply no way for me to account for every single possibility, situation or scenario. Therefore, some champions might actually be much better with another champion, but I just have to do a very general ranking or else we'll be here all day. Secondly, this is not an expert's opinion. This is just my take on the champions that I personally like to play if I'm playing the POC. Third of all, none of the champions are arranged within the categories. Again, there's almost a hundred champions in total. If I were to do that, we are going to be here all day. All right, with that out of the way, let's go over the rankings first real quick. So as with all my tier lists, I have five ranks as usual. S for two of them good, A for awesome, B for nice. Thank you, Michael Rosen, C for not bad, and D for if I really had to. The ranking criteria for the champions are going to be as follows. We're going to consider the cost of the champion, which is how cheap or expensive the champion is. B, the versatility and nicheness of the champion, which basically means how niche the champion is or how versatile the champion can be. And C, the overall efficiency in the game, not taking into consideration the main champion, the star powers, the powers, the relics, or the items. We also won't be going over the support cards that come with each champion. If we were to do that, we're going to be here for a really, really long time. And I'm also going to go over each champion as brief as I can. That way we don't waste too much time on a specific champion and at the same time it makes my editing process a little easier. <laughs> that way I don't end up baking my potato. Very well, with all that out of the way, let us begin. Alright, so first on this list is gonna be Aatrox. Really expensive champion at 6 cost, fairly aggressive however, but also very niche. He's gonna want some dark and synergy for him to be really effective. His level up is also gonna take some time with the world ender, especially if we don't have any mana gems. So I think we're just gonna put him in the C tier for not bad. This is something that I would probably not pick up. Second on this list is Ari, fairly aggressive, really cheap as well. Um, her level 2 gets an elusive, which is always nice. Her level up, however, is a little bit difficult to achieve, can be a little bit niche because of the recall synergy. So I think because of that, we're gonna put her in the B tier. Third on this list is Akshan, in a really similar position with Ari, really cheap champion, fairly aggressive as well. However, his level up is extremely niche. You need to wait for the Warlord's Palace or the Warlord's Horde to count down. So I think for that, we're just gonna put him in the B tier as well. Next up, we have Anivia, not exactly an expensive champion, not exactly the cheapest either. In addition to that, not really that aggressive and also a really really, really niche level up. You need to wait until you're enlightened, which is mana 10. Really difficult to achieve, especially in harder adventures like the Aurelian Sol. For that reason, we're going to put it in the D tier. Moving on, we have Annie, a really cheap champion, really easy to level up. Not exactly as niche as the others, but if you're not able to protect her, she probably won't function too well. Because of that, like the regular POC Annie, we're going to put it in the A tier as well. Next on this list, we have Aphelios, a fairly cheap champion, fairly aggressive as well, but a little bit niche. His requirements to level up involves moon weapons, and at the same time, can be a little bit confusing especially for newer players coming to the POC or you're probably not familiar with how a failures works I think for that reason alone we're gonna put him in the B tier he has some useful tools I don't deny that but it could be a little bit challenging to pilot the first time following that is gonna be Ash also a really decent champion fairly cheap at four costs not exactly the most aggressive but compensates for that in terms of the frostbites however she's more of a stall champion in my opinion based on what I've played not gonna do too well against Aurelian Sol could be decent against the lore adventures I I'm gonna put it in the B tier. Up next is gonna be Aurelian Sol himself, extremely expensive champion at 10 cost. Not exactly the most aggressive, but definitely, definitely compensates for that with the generation of Celestials and of course his high stat line. But because he is fairly expensive and takes quite a while to bring him onto the board, we're gonna put him in the D tier. I think you might see a pattern here. A lot of the expensive champions are probably gonna be in the lower rungs of this tier list. Moving on, we have Azir, a fairly cheap champion at 3 cost, really easy to level up as well, summon synergy there. Not exactly the most aggressive, but you're not going to want to attack with Azir Tomb often anyway. So you're probably going to want to attack with the rest of the units. So in my opinion, probably going to be in the B tier. Really nice to generate some Sand Soldiers, which can deal extra damage for you. Next up, it's going to be Bard. Fairly affordable at four costs. Not exactly the most aggressive. You're going to have to be a little bit patient when you're playing this guy. Uh, like his POC version, if you don't have enough stars on him, he's probably going to be really, really slow to use. And obviously, as a support champion, he's definitely not going to have enough stars. So he's obviously going to be really slow. For that reason alone, we're going to put him in the C tier. We just don't have enough time to 
wait around to take him into the Aurelian Soul. All right, moving on, we have Braum. So not a bad champion to use this one. In fact, I have picked this up quite a few times, quite frankly. Challenger is always nice to have. Regen is also really good. And Braum also generates a lot of Poros for you, which is, of course, a little bit of a compensation for his uh, defensive stat. I think we're going to put Braum in the B tier. I have personally used him. I quite like him, even though he is not exactly as aggressive. He's also really easy to level up as well. You just need to survive 10 damage with him. I think you should have no problem using this guy. Moving on, we have Caitlyn. Tree cost champion, really cheap, fairly aggressive with quick attack. And planting flash bombs isn't too difficult either because she's going to be able to plant it for you. I definitely think we're going to put it in the A tier. I think this is someone that I'm going to pick up if I see her. Next on this list is Darius, a really expensive champion at 6 cost, but a fairly aggressive one, however. He's not exactly difficult to level up, but the problem is that you're not going to be playing him until turn 6. So because of that, I think we're just going to put him in the C tier for not bad. Moving on, we have Diana, a really, really cheap champion, really aggressive champion as well. If you've played her in the POC, you'll know. Unfortunately, her support champion version isn't going to be that good because she's a really niche one, relying on Nightfall to level up here. I think because she is still fairly aggressive, we're going to put her in the A tier. Next up, we have Draven. So Draven's a really aggressive champion. Tree cost champion, really easy to summon. At the same time, fairly aggressive like all Noxian cards. And his level up as well is really easy to achieve. All you need to do is strike with two spinning axes. It shouldn't be too difficult for you. And his level 2 is really, really good as well. Quick attack and the overwhelm keywords. If you slap a couple of spinning axes on that, there's not much that you cannot take down. I think because of that, we're going to put him in the S tier. Moving on, we have Echo. Not exactly the most expensive champion. A fairly aggressive one as well, but he's a really, really niche champion you need to have the predict synergy to level him up which i think is his biggest inhibiting factor because of that we're gonna throw him into the b tier next on this list is elise the spider aggro champion so she's obviously really cheap and really aggressive however she's also really really niche you need to have three plus spiders on the board to level up which might seem easy to achieve but unfortunately if you don't have the right tools you're probably gonna see a lot of spiders dying because of that we're gonna put it in the c for not bad she can be decent but she's probably not the best aggressive champion next on this list is gonna be evelyn a fairly decent champion in terms of its cost. 4 is not too expensive. However, she is really, really niche. You need to kill Hus in order to level her up. And essentially, she levels back down if you're not able to kill enough Hus. Because of that, she's not going to be too functional in my opinion. And frankly, I don't really pick her up too often. I am going to put it in the C tier. What a fall from Grace from a POC counterpart where she's a definite S tier. Moving on, we have Esrael. So this is a really cheap champion at 3 cost. Really aggressive as well. Elusive is always, always very nice to have. He can potentially generate a lot of mystic shots which we can deal chip damage to the nexus too and it's really easy to level up all you need to do is target enemies which isn't too difficult to do because of that we're going to put him in the a tier next up we have fiora a decent four cost champion with a really nice level up as well kill four enemies and essentially you win the game that is actually really, really good, and she should be higher up in this list, but unfortunately, it's not as simple as it sounds. You're going to want to protect her most of the time in order to secure the kills, and the AI in this game is usually very smart, and it usually targets the Fiora if it can, so you're not going to be able to achieve that quick victory as you might imagine. Because of that, we're going to put it in the B tier. Moving on, we have Fizz, a one-cost Bootwater champion, which is obviously really, really cheap. Really easy to level up as well, you just have to play spells and he also gets an elusive every time you play a spell. So obviously as you can tell, a fairly aggressive champion, we're gonna put him into the A tier. Moving on, we have Galio, a really expensive champion at 7 cost. However, he is probably one of the better expensive champions if that makes sense, because essentially his level 2 allows him to rally every time you take damage, which will allow us to attack almost consistently. Now I do recognize this level up isn't exactly the greatest as well, it's really similar to Aurelian Sol where you need to see a certain amount of stats on the board. However, I think because of his level 2, he warrants a spot in the C tier, and I think that's where we're going to put him. Next on the list is Gangplank, a 5 cost champion who is decently aggressive, fairly easy to level up as well, dealing damage to the Nexus in 5 different rounds. Also a really synergistic champion, a lot of other champions can take advantage of the powder kicks that the GP will summon. Off the top of my head, champions like Annie, Misfortune, and Jin. I think we're going to put Gangplank in the B tier. Moving on, we have Garen, a 5 cost champion, and also a fairly decent champion to use, not exactly the most aggressive aggressive but not exactly the worst either he can potentially be both defensive and aggressive at the same time if that makes sense not a very niche champion either can work with a majority of decks really really easy to use champion as a support champion we're gonna put him into the a tier moving on we have nar a fairly decent champion in terms of the cost but quite frankly i'm not really sold on this champion i've personally never picked up the nar if i'm gonna be totally honest with you there were always better options out there i also don't really like the fact that he levels down after every round maybe a really bad decision here probably based 
based on my lack of experience, I am going to put him into the D tier. Next on this list is going to be Gwen. Decent 4 cross champion, fairly aggressive as well, really easy to level up, and on the plus side, she also gets inbuilt lifesteal, which is exactly what you want in the POC. Because of that, we're just going to immediately throw into the S tier like your POC counterpart. Up next is going to be Hecarim, a really expensive champion at 6 cost, but also fairly aggressive. He's really similar to Darius in my opinion, and because of that, he's going to be ranked similarly as well. He's going to be in the C tier. Next on this list is Heimerdinger, a 5 cost champion, which is fairly expensive, extremely niche because he's heavily reliant on spells to generate turrets. In my opinion, not a champion that I would pick up consistently. We're going to put him in the C tier. Moving on, we have Alawi, a 4 cost champion, if I can remember correctly. 1 6 isn't the most aggressive stat, but of course, she compensates for that with the use of tentacles. However, that is exactly the problem. She is a really niche champion that relies on tentacles to function well. Because of that, like other niche champions, we're going to put it directly into the C tier. Up next is going to be Aurelia, a really cheap champion, really aggressive as well. You're going to want to be focusing a lot on attacking if you're playing her. Definitely not a niche champion where all you have to do is just attack to level her up. And once she does level up, the blade surge will serve you really, really nicely. Because of that, I think we're going to put her in the S tier. Next on this list is Jarvan. Although I cannot remember his cost, if I'm not mistaken, he is fairly expensive. However, I think he is fairly decent because he can immediately challenge a unit if you're summoning him through his effect. Do I think he's a really good champion? Probably not. Do I think he's a decent champion? Definitely. Because of that, I think we're going to put him in the nice category. Up next is going to be Jax. As we all know, Jax is a really cheap champion at 2 cost and a really aggressive one as well. His level up, however, is a little bit niche, but it shouldn't be too big of a deal because you're going to be dealing damage with the Jax anyway. Because of that, we're going to put him directly into the S tier. Next on this list is going to be Jace, a 4 cost champion, if I'm not mistaken. Really aggressive as well because you have the option to go with Challenger or Quick Attack, both of which are really, really good keywords. Unfortunately, his level up is a little bit difficult to achieve. You need to play two 6 plus cost spells making him a fairly niche champion to use. Because of that, we're going to put him in the B tier. That's probably the only thing holding him back, in my opinion. Up next, we have Jin. Jin is also a 4 cost champion, and he's a little bit more control base, even though he has the potential to play aggressively. Now, like a Felix, Jin can be a little bit difficult to play if you're new to the game. There's a lot of things that you need to manage, as well as monitor once you're playing him. Because of that, we're going to put him directly in the B tier. Perhaps another most surprising grading here is going to involve the Jinx. Jinx is arguably one of the strongest champions in the POC, but unfortunately as a support champion, she is probably one of the worst. Now obviously 4 cost isn't the most expensive, and she is fairly aggressive with the 4-3 stat line and the quick attack. Now her problem lies in her very, very niche level up condition. She needs to see your hand be empty to level up. That in my opinion is really, really difficult to achieve, unless of course you're using the POC version of Jinx. Because of that, although I recognize her strengths, we're gonna put her in the B tier. Next on this list is Kaiser. So a 5 cost champion this one with the quick attack keyword. Fairly aggressive I guess, but quite frankly not exactly the best support champion. Really really niche level up, she needs to be evolved to level up, and in order to achieve that she needs to see 6 plus unique keywords on allies. Now that quite frankly is a little bit harder to achieve than it sounds. Not every single deck has an abundance of keywords, so you might struggle on that front. Because of that, we're gonna put her into the B tier. Next on this list is Kalista. 4 cost here, which is of course not bad. I guess so-so aggression because she has Fearsome, but she is coming on really late where Fearsome probably isn't going to be too useful. Her level up is fairly easy to achieve where she needs to see 3 plus ally dies. However, once you've leveled her up, the question becomes what you're going to do with it. Because essentially, all the level 2 Kalista is going to do is transfer damage taken to another unit. In my opinion, this is probably not the most efficient support champion. Therefore, we're going to put her into the C tier. Next on this list is Karma, a 5 cost champion which isn't exactly the most aggressive. I refer to my reasoning for Anivia on this one. But just the brief version is that she's only leveling up once she reaches 10 mana. You're not exactly going to be waiting around to achieve that. Therefore, we're just going to immediately throw into the D tier. Up next is Katarina. So if you've played this game before, you'll know Katarina is a fairly aggressive champion. However, in my opinion, she's not really that useful if you cannot get a specific item. The item I'm talking about here is the mana deposit. Because if you're not able to get that, you're probably going to be spending all your mana on one particular card. If you want to take advantage of her to the fullest, you're gonna have to play her and her alone. You're gonna find yourself really, really low on mana. It's gonna be extremely difficult to play other cards that you might need. Because of that fact in mind, we're gonna put her in the B tier. Up next, we have Kale. 
Now, if I'm gonna be honest with you, I've never picked up the kill in the POC. There were always better options elsewhere, so I obviously went for it. On paper, though, she doesn't seem half bad. Five cost is a little bit daunting, but she more than makes up for it with her empowered ability. She's probably not very niche because I think you should be able to get stat buffs really consistently in the POC. Because of that, we're gonna put her into the B tier. Her problem is probably her cost. Next on this list is Kane, a five cost champion as well, but quite frankly, not the strongest champion, taking into account his stat line. 2 5 isn't the greatest, and unfortunately for his cost, that's probably a death sentence. However, his level up is really, really easy to achieve. All you need to do is strike twice, and after that, you have access to either the elusive Shadow Assassin or the Overwhelmed Ras with the Lifesteal. Now, because of that fact alone, we're gonna throw him into the B tier. If I had to rank this properly, I'd probably put Kane at the lower echelon of the B tier. His saving grace is that he can potentially offer lifesteal, and at the same time, he's not exactly as difficult to level up. Next on this list, we have Cannon, a one cost champion like all Yoro champions and quick attack. Now, personally, I've never really used the Cannon. The reason for that is quite simply because there were always better options elsewhere. Really, really niche champion, however, because if I'm not mistaken, he relies on recalls to function properly. Now, I'm inclined to put him fairly low on this tier list. Maybe there's a better way to play him and I'm not seeing it, but right now I'm just gonna put him in the B tier. Next on this list we have Kindred. Now I'm laughing because if you guys have been on my channel for quite some time, you'll know the champion that I struggle with the most in the POC is probably the Kindred. However, if we're talking about a support champion Kindred here, it's actually fairly decent because the level up condition is frankly really easy to achieve. The cost isn't too bad either and the quick attack is also nice to have. Now bearing that in mind, we're actually gonna put the Kindred in the B tier. Up next we have LeBlanc. So as we all know, LeBlanc is possibly the strongest champion in the POC. In my opinion, the support champion version is no different either. Tree cost is insanely cheap for a 5-2 unit, a really aggressive unit as well with the quick attack and the 5-2 stat line. You can also level her up really really easily. All she needs to do is see you deal 15 damage. You simply just cannot go wrong with this champion. Because of that, LeBlanc is a definite S tier. Up next we have Lee Sin, a 5 cost champion with the ability to get challenger and barrier in the same turn. A really really decent effect, especially if you're trying to clear the board. However, the the problem with the Lee Sin is that he needs to see you play 10 plus spells to level up. Not exactly an easy thing to do if you don't have a spell reliant deck. Because of this, we're gonna throw him into the B tier. I acknowledge he can be really strong, especially once he levels up with the inbuilt dragon's rage, but if you cannot level him up or can't play any spells for that matter, he's not gonna be too good in my opinion. Up next, we have Leona, a 5 cost champion with a 3-5 stat line. Obviously not the most aggressive and quite frankly, very, very niche as well. She needs to see daybreaks to level up, which is probably gonna be really hard to achieve if you don't have have enough daybreaks in your deck. Now what's good about the Leona is that she can potentially stun a unit with the daybreak. Unfortunately, that's gonna be only one time and only during the first summon. In my opinion, we're gonna put her into the C tier, although she's probably gonna be higher up on the C tier, nearing the B, just because of the stun. Next up, we have Lissandra, a three cost champion. Now, although she seems really, really cheap, her level up is fairly difficult to achieve. She needs to see two eight plus cost champions on the board, and even though she will be summoning two Frozen Thralls, you're gonna have to wait eight rounds for them to activate. Obviously, you can manually bring on an eight cost unit, but you're gonna have to wait until mana 8 to make that work. And after all of that hassle, all you're gonna get is a tough on your nexus, which could be decent, but all in all, I think the effort isn't worth it. You might as well try to end the game early, then try to stall for the AI to run out of cards. Therefore, with all that in mind, she's gonna be another cheap champion that has to go into the C tier. Next on this list is Lucian. So as we all know, Lucian got a cost reduction and at the same time a health reduction in the last patch, but he is still a really, really strong champion. One cost is obviously really, really good. He's also really, really aggressive with the 2-1 stat line. Now, the best part about the Lucian is that he's not a niche champion. He's really, really easy to level up. All he needs to do is see 4 plus ally dice or see a Senna die. Once you have hit that level 2 on Lucian, he gets access to double attack and also a rally whenever an ally dies. You're going to be able to deal consistent damage every single round. Now, in my opinion, one of the best champions in the POC. I'm just a little bit skeptical on his health. Because of that, we're going to put him in the A tier. 
probably a high A, but I'm too lazy to arrange it. Up next, we have Lulu. And this is yet another champion that I probably will not pick up if I see it regardless. Now, I do recognize that she is fairly cheap. She's either a 3 or a 4 cost. Unfortunately, I cannot remember. But either way, she's not really the most aggressive. Her level up is going to rely on support, which is a little bit niche. But once she does level up, she has the potential to be fairly decent. Especially since the pick spell that she generates every round will give yourself a barrier or potentially a enemy of your choice the vulnerable. I think based on my personal opinion, we're going to put Lulu in the C tier. Probably in the higher C and the lower Bs around there, mainly because of her cost. Next up, we have Lux. So she's a 5 cost champion from Demacia and she relies on spells to make her work. Now the Lux deck in the POC is fairly strong, but as a support champion, she's heavily reliant on a deck that has a lot of spells. She's a little bit niche because of that, but I still think she's a fairly decent pickup if you have to go with her. In my opinion, she's going to be in the B tier for me, probably towards the lower end of the B tier, mainly because of her 5 cost. Up next, we have Malphite. So Malphite is yet another expensive support champion coming in at 7 cost with the tough. Not really that aggressive and he relies on landmarks to level up. The only good thing about the Malphite is that he will be generating stuns every single round after you level him up, but chances are it's probably too late into the game to make use of him, at least in my opinion. Therefore, with all that being said, we're probably going to throw Malphite into the D tier. Up next, we have Master Yi. So a really, really cheap champion this one, either a 2 or 3 cost if I'm not mistaken. Quick attack is always nice to have and of course we can level him up consistently all we need to do is just strike and essentially we should be able to level him up so i think for that fact alone we're just going to immediately throw yi into the a tier really good champion just like the poc variant following that up is going to be yet another a tier champion it's going to be misfortune now the reason why misfortune is a tier in my opinion is because just like her poc version she's really easy to use all you need to do is just bring her on and she'll deal chip damage to the nexus for you of course once she levels up which is also fairly easy easy to achieve, she should be able to deal even more damage to the Nexus and potentially even attack safely on her own. Summoning her is also not a problem because she is really cheap at 3 costs. Therefore, in my opinion, she is a definite A tier. Yet another A tier champion here is gonna be Nami. So as we all know, she is one of the newest champions added to the POC, but as a support champion, she is also really, really good. Really, really cheap champion as well, either 2 or 3 costs, I cannot remember, but also a really easy level up condition where you just have to play spells. Now, you might be wondering why did I not say the same for Lee Sin? The reason for that is quite simply down to the cost. Nami is just cheaper and of course you level her up faster. So in my opinion, she's probably going to be a much better pick overall. On top of that, her effect is also really, really useful since you get to grant a ally plus 1 plus 0, making her most definitely an A tier support champion. Moving on, we have Nasus. So Nasus is a fairly expensive champion coming on at 6 costs and a really weak stat line as well at 2-2. Two, two. However, the saving grace about the Nasus is that he can potentially get to a really high attack stat if you're able to consistently kill units, which you're probably going to do in the POC. Once you have brought the Nasus up to a high enough attack stat, you should be able to easily level him up just by striking once for 10 plus damage. Now because of this, he is a little bit niche and if I'm going to be honest with you, can be a bit useless if you're not able to make consistent kills. Kills. Now because of that, we're going to put him in the B tier for nice, probably on the tail end of the B tier and on the higher end of the C tier in my opinion. Up next, we have Nautilus. So this guy is a really expensive champion at 7 costs and at the same time, his level up requires you to go deep, which is easy to achieve, but the problem here is that you're going to be tossing your cards. Now as we all know in the POC, there's really nothing that works with toss, so essentially, if cards that you're tossing out is probably going to be your core deck. Overall, there's really not much to talk about here. Nautilus is just a bad pick in my opinion. I would even go as far and advise you not to pick this guy up. Therefore, we're just going to immediately throw him in the D tier. Up next, we have Nocturne. So I believe this champion is a 5 cost champion if my memory serves me correctly. And this guy operates off Nightfall, which is similar to Diana. Unlike Diana, however, Nocturne isn't exactly the greatest because first of all, he's not as aggressive. Fearsome around mana 5 isn't really going to help you at all. I do recognize he is fairly aggressive just like most of the Shadow Isles archetypes, but quite frankly, he is not my first pick. Therefore, I'm just going to immediately put him in the C tier. He's not too bad that he warrants to be in the D, but definitely not good enough to go higher. Moving on, we have Nora. So as we all know, Nora is Legends of Runeterra's only unique champion so far, and she's actually rather decent. Elusive is always nice to have in the POC, which already is an instant plus. Her cost isn't too bad either, coming on at 4 costs if I'm not mistaken, and the portals that she brings to your deck is actually 
actually not bad. You have the ability to get a lot of random units which can potentially help you win games. I think that's a win in my book. Therefore, I'm just going to throw her into the nice category. Moving on, we have Orn. So yet another 7 cost champion. And I think you can already tell by the emphasis where am I going to put this guy in. So even his POC variant isn't well liked. And quite frankly, I can understand why. His cost is really expensive, which makes him a little bit of a chore to play. Especially even more so when he's a support champion, which you're probably not going to even use. I'm not going to talk too much about this one. I'm going to immediately put Orn in the D tier. Up next, we have Pantheon, the Giga Chad himself. Himself. So Pantheon is a 4 cost champion that is of course fairly decent. He is also fairly strong in his own right even though his base stat surprisingly doesn't reflect his demeanor. Now you're going to be really reliant on self-targeting the Pantheon in order to buff up his stats and take full advantage of the Overwhelm. But a 4 cost unit with the Overwhelm and the potential to grow really really big in the attack department, I think that's a win in my book. Therefore I'm going to immediately put the Pantheon in the B tier. Moving on, we have Poppy. So this is a 4 cost champion with a level up condition that should be easy to achieve. However, here's the catch. She needs to attack to grant that stat and obviously you're not going to be able to attack consistently every single time. Yes, it will increase your damage output, but if you're not able to get an overwhelm on those beefy units and deal direct damage to the Nexus, you're practically just stalling out the game. In my opinion, not so great. Therefore, with all that being said, we're going to put Poppy in the C tier. Next on this list, we have Pike. So Pike is probably one of the funnest champions to play in the POC, but unfortunately as a support champion, he is probably one of the worst. The reason for that is quite simply because he's extremely niched. He relies on Lurk to consistently deal damage. Tree cost and quick attack is obviously really nice, but like I said, he's a really niche champion and he will fail if you're not able to get Lurk consistently. Therefore, with that in mind, you're probably better off picking someone else, hence Spike is gonna sit here in the C tier. Up next we have Quinn. So Quinn's a 5 cost champion that offers a scout keyword. On paper it seems like a really decent option here. With a scout you get double attack, but her cost is an absolute killer in my opinion. 5 cost for this champion doesn't justify picking it up. Even though you're able to attack twice, that's only gonna happen after you summon her onto the board. Bearing all that in mind, we're gonna put her into the C tier. Moving on, we have Rek'Sai, a 3 cost champion with a Lurk synergy here. So for the same reasons like Pike, this is probably a really, really bad champion, even though it's cheap. However, in my opinion, the Rek'Sai is far worse than Pike, and the reason for that is quite simply because on her way to leveling up, she's going to be shuffled back into your deck. Her level up condition requires her to attack with 10 plus powers. And the only way for her to increase her stat is to get Lurk or through items, which we're not going to consider for the sake of the video. The only way to raise her stat consistently is to attack and trigger the Lurk, which obviously is not going to be consistent if you're not playing a Lurk deck. Now bearing all this in mind, she's probably not the best champion to pick in the POC. Therefore, I'm going to put Rek'Sai in the D tier. Up next we have Renekton. So Renekton is a 4 cost champion with Overwhelm and he's also fairly aggressive. His level up condition is also really easy. All he has to do is strike for a certain amount of damage. And of course it's made easier to achieve that by challenging enemies since he will get a plus 2 plus 2 stat buff. Really simple champion, easy to use and level up. The only problem is his cost so I'm gonna put him in the B tier. Up next we have Riven. So Riven is a 3 cost champion from Noxus with the Reforge concept. Now Riven is actually really really easy to level up. All you need to do is reforge three times and create the Blade of the Exile. Prior to the recent patch, Riven needs to see the Blade of Exile in your hand in order to level up. However, after the patch, all you need to do now is create the Blade of Exile, she can be in your deck and she will still level up. One thing to note however is that the reforge concept is a really really niche concept. Only Riven has this in the game and only her units has the ability to synergize with her. But because the Blade Fragments give really really good effects, like the plus 2 plus 0, an overwhelm and a quick attack, we're gonna put Riven in the B tier. Taking a look at Rumble now, a 4 cost champion from Noxus and Banal City, his level up condition involves Mecha Yordles and discarding cards will give him a couple of useful keywords. Now personally, I would not go for this champion, mainly because of his super niche level up and at the same time, I'm not sold on the discard synergy at all. Now I do realize I picked Draven for my S tier, but that's a different scenario. Draven does not need the discard to get the quick attack. Rumble here needs the discard to get his keywords, which in my opinion is probably a really bad trade-off. Therefore, with all that in mind, we're gonna put him in the C tier. He's not terrible, but I probably won't pick him either. 
Moving on to Sajuani now, a 6 cost unit with Overwhelm. Now Sajuani has a similar level up condition to Gangplank, where she needs to see you deal damage on 5 different rounds, and of course she can potentially Frostbite as well. The problem with Sajuani is that I'm not really a fan of her cost. Fairly expensive champion, and you're probably trying to end the game by then. Therefore, in my opinion, we're just gonna immediately put her in the C tier. Looking at Senna now, who is a 5 cost champion, and she also has Darkness Synergy. Her level up condition is a little bit niche, because you have to kill units with spells, or see a Lucian die. Now this is yet another champion that I personally will not go with, quite simply because there's just too many hoops to jump through, and at the same time, you're probably not gonna be playing her anyway. One thing to note as well is that if you pair the Senna with a Vagar in the POC, it actually makes the Vagar much harder to play, because the Senna here will decelerate the Burst Darkness back to a fast, which is actually really, really bad. Therefore, taking that into consideration, we're gonna put Senna in the C tier. She can be decent in some decks, but probably not game-changing. Up next, we have Seraphine. So this is a 2-cost champion from Piltover and Zon, and she basically just revolves around spells. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I've never picked up this champion either. There were always better options whenever she shows up, so obviously I went with the better alternatives. However, I do recognize her potential, especially her level 2, where she's able to duplicate the spells that you play. This is definitely really, really good, especially paired with spell-based champions in the POC. To keep things short, let's go ahead and just put Seraphine in the B tier. Up next, let's take a look at Shen. Now, Shen is a champion that, in my opinion, isn't that great in the POC. That's quite simply because the barrier isn't really gonna help much outside of a couple of rounds. Now personally, I don't find myself picking up the Shen too often because there were always better alternatives out there compared to the barrier the Shen offers. And besides, you're gonna wanna play more aggressively than defensively when it comes to the POC. Therefore, in my opinion, we're gonna put him in the not bad category. Moving on, we have Shavana. So this is a 4-cross champion, which is obviously fairly cheap. Fear is also a really nice keyword to have on her, because the more she kills, the more she's able to raise her attack stat. But here's the problem, she is a really Feast of Famine champion. If you're not able to get kills on the Shavana, you're not able to raise her attack stat. And if you're not able to raise her attack stat, you're probably not gonna see much use out of her. Her level up condition is also a little bit niche, but that shouldn't be a problem if you're able to consistently strike with her. Now taking all that into account, I'm inclined to put Shavana in the B tier. Let's take a look at Scion now. You probably already know where this is going, but let's talk about it anyway. 7 cost is not really good for a champion for the POC as we've already established. Even though he has the Overwhelm, he can't exactly take advantage of that unless he's able to build stats. In order to do so, you need to discard, and to level him up, it's even harder because you need to discard units with a total of 25 power. Like the Rumble, discarding isn't exactly what you want to do if your deck has a lot of key units. And with Scion coming in at 7 cost as well, I don't think he's worth to pick up. Therefore, I'm gonna put him in the D tier. Moving on, we have Sivir. So Sivir is a 4 cost champion with a fairly easy level up. All you need to do is deal a total of 25 plus damage, and it doesn't matter if she's in your deck, in your hand, or on your board. Once she does level up, however, she's able to grant all keywords onto all allies whenever she attacks. This makes Sivir a really, really good champion for the POC, especially since she has such an easy level up condition and such a really good effect. However, I think she's only warranted an A tier, and the reason for that is quite simply because for all the keywords in the world, if you're not able to strike for a good amount of damage, it's not really gonna help. Up next, we've got Soraka, a 3-cost champion from Targon, which is centered around heals. Now, quite frankly, this is probably not a great champion, and the reason for that is quite simply because the heals isn't really gonna help you too much. On earlier and weaker adventures, for sure, but once you head to the Aurelion Sol or the Galio, heals aren't really gonna help you too often. I also think she's really, really niche in the sense that you're probably gonna want to seek her out if you're playing the Tom Kench. Outside of that, I don't really see myself using this champion. Therefore, with that in mind, we're gonna put her in the D tier. Up next, we have Swain, the Grand General himself. So Swain is a 5 cost Noxon champion, which is fairly expensive, but a really aggressive one as well. Now I do realize I did mention that Fearsome isn't exactly a good keyword on the expensive unit. However, his level up condition as well as his card effect is really really good. Because whenever you nix a strike, you're able to deal 3 to enemies. Now his level up is a little bit niche because you need to deal 12 non-combat damage, which is a little bit hard to achieve if your deck is not reliant on spells and skills. But assuming he does level up, 
he's probably a really good champion as well because he can potentially stun enemies with his effect. All in all, a really solid champion, although his cost is a little bit of a hindrance. Therefore, I think he's gonna be in the B tier for me. Taking a look at Tom Kench now. So Tom Kench is a 4 cost champion with capture synergy. Now obviously he's not as aggressive since he relies on capturing units, which means his health is obviously going to be much higher. Interestingly, you should have no problem leveling up as well, because Tom Kench will automatically generate captures every single round. Now the problem with the Tom Kench, however, is that his cost is fairly expensive and he's not really offering anything in terms of attack. Once again, when you're coming up against stronger enemies like the Aurelian Sol or the Galio for that matter, you're probably not going to be able to capture many units consistently. Therefore, with that in mind, Tom Kench, in my opinion, belongs in the C tier. Moving on, we have Talia. So Talia is a 5 cost champion hailing from Shurima with landmark synergy. Now in my personal opinion, anything with landmarks in POC isn't really that good. They are usually reliant on slower playstyles which you cannot really afford when you're coming up against stronger enemies. Talia is definitely a culprit of that, both in her POC variant as well as a support champion variant. I personally would never pick up this champion as support, therefore I'm immediately gonna throw her in the D tier. Let's take a look at Terrage now. So Terrage is a 4-cross champion with support synergy. During his level 1, his supported ally will get tough, and during his level 2, the supported ally will be unkillable. Now obviously this is a really exciting prospect, but you must remember his level up relies on supporting. Now once again, this is a really niche level up. And to do it 7 times, assuming he's your only supporting unit, you're gonna need to do this in 7 rounds. Obviously, you don't have the luxury of time in the POC, but I do recognize the prospect of a potential unkillable unit. Therefore, let's be a little bit lenient and let's give Terrage the C tier. Up next, we have Teemo. So Teemo is a one-cost unit hailing from Bendel City with the elusive keyword and puff cap synergy. Now, Teemo is probably one of the best support champions that you can pick up, mainly because he checks all the boxes. He's cheap, He's aggressive, he levels up easily, and he's also just a really solid damage dealer. Well, passively through his puff caps, of course. Now, I don't think much needs to be said about the Teemo. There's a reason why he's called the Little Devil. So I think with that fact in mind, we're gonna put Teemo in the S tier. Up next, we have Thresh. So Thresh is a 5-cost champion with a 3-6 stat line, and he relies on seeing units die. But the catch is he needs to be on the board to see those units die. And because his cost is fairly high, that's gonna be a fairly tall order. Now, I do recognize that Thresh has the potential to drag out expensive units once he levels up. But remember, this is Thresh as the support champion. A fair amount of POC's champions are fairly cheap. Having Thresh come on later after those champions are summoned kind of defeats the purpose in my opinion. Therefore, I think we're gonna rank Thresh in the D tier if I really had to. Up next, we have Tristana. So this is yet another card that I have never picked up. There were always better options out there, which is why I never saw the need. However, she is fairly cheap coming onto the board at mana 3, but her stat line is a little bit abysmal. Now Tristana is also really really niche since she relies on summoning multi-region units. This probably makes Tristana quite a bad pickup outside of a Bandal City deck. I think bearing that fact in mind, we're gonna put Tristana in the C tier. Up next we have Trundle. So Trundle is a 5 cost unit with a really interesting level up here. He needs to see the Ice Pillar be summoned in order to level him up. Now for those of you who don't know, the Ice Pillar is an 8 cost unit which means you're gonna have to wait until mana 8 to bring that on. Now I do not deny his stat line is fairly decent, his regeneration keyword is also not bad as well. But once again, like I mentioned, you're not gonna be able to wait around until 8 mana, especially when you're taking on Aurelion Sol. Therefore, with that in mind, we're gonna put Trundle in the D tier. Now joining Trundle is also gonna be Trindamir. He's gonna be sitting in the D tier mainly because of his cost. Trindamir, as we all know, is an 8 cost champion. Once again, you don't want to wait around until the game reaches 8 mana. Even more so, spending all that mana on one single unit, irrespective of if it's a champion or not. Now, I do realize Trindamir is a fairly strong champion, but in my opinion, the cost is just not worth it. Up next, we have Twisted Fate. So Twisted Fate is a 2 cost champion with a pretty decent stat line and a quick attack keyword. His level up is also really easy to achieve, all you need to do is draw cards. Now in my opinion, TF is really really good because not only does he level up easily, he has the option to play a couple of skills. 
The red card, the blue card and the yellow card all can potentially help you in your battle. Therefore with that in mind, we're gonna put TF in the B tier. I like him. Now let's take a look at Udir. So Udir is a 5 cost champion focused around the stand swap mechanic. Now because of that, he is a little bit niche because if you cannot get enough stand swaps, you're not gonna be able to benefit from him. With all that being said, however, I'm still gonna put him in the B category. And the reason for that is simply because if he can get the stand swaps, he can be very good. Up next, we've got Vayne. So Vayne, as we all know, is a really aggressive champion in the path for champions. However, her support champion version isn't as aggressive, but still manages to hold her own. Coming in at a 3 cost, which makes it one of the cheapest cards, she can still deal damage, especially in the early turns. Her level up condition is also fairly easy, although a little bit long, where she needs to see you attack 4 plus times. Therefore, when it comes down to it, we're gonna have to give Vayne an A tier here. Now let's take a look at Vagar. So Vagar is a 4 cost champion coming in at 1-4 and quite frankly he's a champion that I would never pick up. Reason for that is quite simply because outside of his POC variant, he's practically useless. To benefit from using the Vagar, you need to have him at level 2. Only then will you be able to deal darkness damage to the Nexus. If he dies or fails to level up, you're not able to do so. Therefore, in my opinion, he's really niche and because of that, he's gonna fall into the D tier. Let's take a look at Viego now. So Viego is probably one of the best support champions you can pick up. Yes, he is a really expensive champion at 5 cost, but what he offers is a really, really good champ removal. Viego is an excellent pick into the Aurelian Soul because this level 2 will allow you to remove as many champions as possible. Therefore, in my opinion, Viego deserves to be in the S tier. Up next, we have Victor. So Victor is a 4 cost champion from Piltover and Zon with Augment Synergy. Now Victor is a fairly decent champion to pick up, not only because is he fun to play, but he's also really fun to use. His level up is really easy to achieve because they're gonna want to play the hex core he creates every round. On top of that, every hex core you play will grant Victor a random keyword. Additionally, Augment will allow Victor to get a stat buff as well for every created card. Therefore, this makes Victor one of the funnest and strongest champions to use as a support champion. With that in mind, we're gonna put Victor in the B tier. Up next, we've got Vi. So Vi is a 5 cost champion with a 2-4 stat line. She also has the tough and challenger keyword, which not only makes her hard to kill, but easy to use as well. If you're able to get her to level 2 and she strikes for 10 plus damage after that, you're gonna deal an additional 5 damage onto the Nexus. In other words, it's a 5 damage impact. Now based on that fact, we're gonna put her in the B tier. Next up, we have Vladimir. Now to be honest with you, I have never had to pick up this champion either. There were always better options available. However, being a 5 cost champion with the damage synergy, I really don't think he's that great of a champion. I do recognize he has the potential to heal your Nexus, but you're gonna do it at the cost of your own units. Now I cannot imagine something like that would be great for Aurelian Sol runs, but it could be useful on lower level adventures. However, in my opinion, I think we're gonna put him in the C tier. Moving on, we have Zeref. So once again, this is another landmark unit, and I think you can already tell where this one's gonna go. He's also a really, really niche champion. He needs to destroy landmarks to level up, and once again, there are not many decks in the POC with landmark synergy. I don't think we need to talk much about this one. Zeref's just gonna go straight into the D tier. Let's talk about Yasuo now, the wind shitter. Now Yasuo is probably one of my favorite champions to play in the POC, and he's also a really decent support champion. 4 cost isn't too shabby, and he has the potential to strike enemies if they're recalled or stunned. However, he's a little bit niche in the sense that he needs stuns and recalls to level up, but once he does level up, he can strike for his attack stat and deal more damage. Now I think taking that into consideration, we're gonna put Yasuo in the B tier. Moving on to Yumi and her attachment synergy. Yet again, this is another champion that I personally never had to pick up because there were always, always better options available. She's not exactly terrible, at least in my opinion. Tree cost isn't too bad, and her entire shtick is attaching herself to one of the units. In turn, the unit will get a plus one plus one, and if the attached unit has attacked three times, she levels up in the process. Now getting extra stat buffs is always nice, Therefore, I think we're just gonna put her in the C tier. Let's take a look at Zed now. So Zed is a 3 cost champion with a 3-2 stat line. In my opinion, he's one of the best support champions for the POC. Really easy to use, really easy to level up, and really easy to play as well. He comes on really early and he should be able to take out most weak units. We're not gonna talk much about this champion. If you've played the Zed, and I'm pretty sure you have, you're gonna understand why this guy deserves an S tier. Up next, we have Zix. 
Once again, another champion with landmark synergy, similar to Xerath where Ziggs needs to see landmarks destroyed to level up. However, his saving grace is his really cheap cost, and at the same time, even at his level 1, he's still able to deal damage to his blocker without any requirements. I think for that fact alone, we're gonna put Ziggs in the C tier, slightly above the other landmark synergy champions in the low Cs or the high Ds. Next up, we have Zillion. So Zillion is a 4 cost 1 4 champion, where he needs to see two allied time bombs destroyed in order to level up. Now personally, I don't really like this champion. Reason for that is quite simply because it's really difficult to level him up. And once you do, I don't think he's that beneficial. Getting two allied time bombs isn't as easy as it sounds, because they're gonna be generating cards into your deck, and predicting it is gonna be a game of odds. If you have too many cards in your deck, you're gonna have a difficult time getting exactly the card you need. Therefore, in my opinion, Zillion is probably not a good support champion. I'm gonna put him in the D tier. Finally, we have Zoe. So Zoe is a really, really cheap champion coming in at one cost with an elusive keyword, which is obviously really, really good. Now, Zoe has a really easy level up condition as well, where she needs to see 10 unique cards being played. And when she does level up, whatever cards with new keywords will be granted to every single card on the board. In my opinion, she's a really good champion, but she's gonna take some time to level up. She's also really, really weak and susceptible to removals, which might make it difficult for her to level up. Therefore, in my opinion, she's probably gonna sit in the A tier. Hey there everyone, Future Akeflos here with an addendum to this video. So essentially, in the original footage, I forgot to rank Varus on this list. In fact, he wasn't even included in this list. And essentially, I remembered, so I just wanted to quickly add this one in. So Varus is a 4 cost champion with a 3-4 stat line with the target get synergy honestly not too bad of a champion not too difficult to level him up either some decks will cater towards this some decks won't so it's a little bit 50 50 in this one i think in my opinion we're just gonna throw varus in the b tier and there you have it that is all the support champions here in the path of champions ranked in this tier list once again please 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 take everything i said here with a grain of salt really really important especially for a video of this nature regarding the support champions because as i mentioned as well there's a lot of possible combinations and permutations that will factor into which champion is actually good stuff like the star powers the champion that you're running how synergistic it is with a support champion and of course the powers and the relics and the items that you're gonna get so yeah please bear that in mind if you're using my video as a guide now if you guys enjoyed this video please consider liking it that will actually help my video get reached by more people and if you enjoy my channel consider subscribing as well it really helps me out a lot tier lists like this one take exceptionally long to make especially on the hardware i'm working with so any help would be very much appreciated besides that it's it's also so that you don't miss future episodes or uploads of POC or Legends of Runeterra content here on the channel. With all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching as well as joining me on this one. This is Kevlo signing off. Hopefully I catch you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.